in today's video i'm breaking down the costs of this project and the next steps if you're doing a classic restore project it is going to be expensive i did make 35 videos about this restoration honda cb 250 42 year old motorcycle how much have i spent was it worth it what should you do if you're in this situation there's a few things that i picked up that are essential a lot of people do this anyway but if you're watching today's episode you're going to pick up these additional benefits of finding this out ultimately i did decide to cut my losses and stop spending money on the restoration while it was a difficult decision i know it was the right one i had gained valuable skills in addition to uh, putting together a motorcycle engine taking it apart loads of additional things which i've not really done i had an idea about them but i've not really done so what we're doing today is we're gonna justify the amount of spending and i'm gonna give you an overview of where we are at the moment so with the bike i've got to a point where i've restored it we can see what we actually did so we did a number of things where we started was should you buy an old motorcycle 42 year old classic motorbike how to remove the petrol fuel tank from the motorcycle how to change and clean motorcycle air filter how to make a simple fuel feed tank auxiliary tank i make space in a small carriage for a motorcycle workshop because i needed space to work on this motorcycle how long does it take to put carbs back into a motorcycle how to take stripped bolts and screws out easily because if you're working on an old project you will need to do that so that is something to consider there's so many additional things while doing a motorcycle restore project that you can actually pick up learn and then think wait a minute that would make an interesting video for someone to see so it's justifiable that having this project we've actually spent money however we had 35 video ideas i'm also going to be sharing how much i made from these videos so stay tuned for that so that's where it stopped 35 so at that point how much money did i spend uh, well that's a good question on screen i've got obviously expenses we had to record down what we were spending money on so first up we've got uh, you can see on the right hand side well kind of the the breakdown of the cost so we've got what are all of these little bits so we've got things like we needed these air can and jb weld engine bolts cb gaskets wet and dry sandpaper bore gauge caliper measure compression tester clear coat for a spray fuel filter and line edge primer thread lock two times primer spray paint fuel filter half face spray mask so basically things we needed to buy in order to do this project and that was all part of that budget that's the first page second page is uh let's wait, let me zoom out and go on to the second page that's the third page there okay so we got filter we've got carb iron bolts copper grease so we spent 1438 pounds so far let's take away the original cost of the bike from that so we can see how much we spent on parts 538 pounds it's just over half its value on parts what are some learnings from this so far how much more do we need to spend to get the motorcycle back on the road we need to spend an additional plus 154 exhaust because it needs exhaust and plus about 180 for a good pair of tires 180 i think they were yeah 180 or so on my level now should we spend that additional money in the budget i was up to 1500 pounds i could have spent in total so we're very close there however i'm going to be looking at this and seeing if it is worth spending additional money also in this video i'm going to break down why you should maybe look at this differently because i think if we looked back in hindsight what is a good thing to do we should have bought two motorcycles in of the same make maybe that would have been cheaper because we could have used parts between the two motorcycles if it's a classic restore but i didn't want to go down having two motorcycles because there's no space to store them all so that's something to consider however to save money that would have been the correct procedure however has this been worthwhile spending this kind of money on a classic motorcycle what is its current value a good motorcycle of this condition would probably get you get about two thousand pounds two thousand five hundred pounds so we will probably end up spending that much money to get it back on the road because as you do things there are hidden things for example taking the engine out you notice there are some engine bolt issues we spent a lot of time trying to get that out using heat on it and all sorts of things and that wasted time at the moment time is precious and working on additional projects 
it's a matter of aligning your time to these things. If you're doing this slowly as a project, like every Sunday, once a week, and just picking up things, that's fine. But if your aim is to get it restored and rideable as quick as possible, you're going to have to spend some time, some money, and invest in that. So, so far, we've looked at the costings of what we've spent. Uh, if you want, let me know in the comments. I can give you like a PDF or just give you these print shots. So you can see what I spent and how much I spent on each of these. This is all the best price possible at the time, either on Amazon, eBay, or the parts websites to get the best price for this uh, item. So we try to be as frugal as possible with the, the things we spent. All of the equipment that we've got was spent on the motorcycle. Things that are left over, we could potentially sell to get our money back. So for example, we bought things such as like the little scissor lift for motorcycle. So that could be sold again to recoup some costs. And there's other things that were all used on the bike. The paint job didn't do too well. So we used a uh, paint. However, the paint was meant to be like a fuel resistant paint, but that was not the case. The tank looks ridiculous now after a few attempts of putting fuel in there. Uh, the carburetors needed a lot of work, so we had to spend a lot of time taking that. When I say we, I mean I. I had to take them out and look through them and like, try and figure that out. There's another channel that has been going through a similar journey as me, Ryan's Garage UK. I've seen recently he's done a video of his first ride out, so that spurred me on to think, wait a minute, I need to do a quick review of where I am and should I continue with this? Because I can ask for more budget, another £500 maybe, and I can probably get that bike on the road. And I'm thinking it's that time of year, isn't it, where we're going to be getting out. So I've done a number of videos recently about scooter riding and scooters, which are like easy, just get on and ride. So with a classic motorcycle, how realistic is it that was meant to be the project? After I restored it, I was going to ride it out and see how many issues I faced. Because you're saving money on things like uh, MOTs and tax because you don't pay that as a historic vehicle. However, is that a cost to it being practical and reliable? would it have actually been any good going out so every year you'll notice i take my scooter out dust it off charge the battery fuel it and i'll start using it for summer so would that have been a similar case with a uh, historic bike or would i have had lots and lots of issues and having a motorcycle with gears is interesting to ride so possibly that's something we need to look at however for now uh, let me have a look and explain to you what we made in terms of income from this so obviously as a business venture if i'm making videos about a motorcycle i enjoyed the process i got lots of learnings from it so for example i did lots of little uh, projects with the bike where we made ex auxiliary fuel tanks i did loads of little things like that let's have a quick look at the most highest earning video of that again it's not going to be a lot of money so don't think it's going to be making thousands of pounds let me log on to that and see that for you now so I'll explain how much I actually made from the videos that I made on the channel and what that revenue looks like in this next video. So check out the next video here to see how much I actually made from these videos in terms of YouTube revenue.